Welcome back to space and also welcome back to Project Leo, our brand new project on the channel. Today in the second episode and you made it work. Over 120 comments that I all analyzed and brought into today's episode in which we are going to you know, realize the first of one of the major points you guys came up with. So, as you can see, there is a big, big space thing assembling. But uh, let's go through there with a couple of things, first of all. Now, in today's episode, we are going to make the space savannah, as you've said. Um, we are going to go and build some biomes, as it seems. Uh, a lot of you guys have suggested making biomes as kind of the 10 different habitats, and I absolutely love the idea. Um, I guess we have to to be a little bit more creative with it um, so we might actually bend the um the idea about the biomes a little so as we do know that the oceania dlc is coming uh, actually in a couple days already uh, the next biome is going to be the oceania biome even though it's not technically a biome it's actually more like a continent if you will or like an area um, but i think it's totally fine to kind of bring this in as like an water ocean you know biome which i mean the ocean is a biome anyway so it's the aquatic biome however i don't want to do it like aquatic it's a little bit of a stretch i know but um i think it's gonna be fine however one more thing that you guys came up with and a lot of comments talked about is going to be happening right now on screen so before we go into the savannah habitat which is um rather simple and i hope you guys feel inspired by that because i thought you know in space there will be a little bit of a um you know, <laughs> you will have a lack of pieces, you know, and uh, it's very expensive to bring stuff up here. So uh, it's not going to be hyper detailed, maybe. Um, but this one over here is going to be very detailed because that's going to be our greenhouse ring. Now, you guys came up with a lot of good things in the comments, including how on earth, <laughs> how in space, I should say, um, are we going to feed all the animals? That is a very valid question. And therefore, we are going to assemble a ring that is acting like a greenhouse, which is going to be positioned um, underneath the main hub. So that's going to, it's actually going to look very cool, I got to admit. It's really looking fantastic once it's done. And we're making some shelves and stuff, making sure that everything is good. We also have some water taps in which, you know, potentially fish can be grown um, as like, because fish in, okay, I think we have to start talking about the inspiration I have over here. So this um, is inspired by vertical farming. In fact, it's not really vertical farming this time around, but let me explain a little. Now, the concept of vertical farming is something I do love anyways. For those of you who don't know, the idea is that in a vertical farm, you utilize the different levels in order to make sure to um, take the biggest benefit of all the stuff you have. So in the lowest compartment, you most likely have a fish farm. The reason for that is it uses a lot of water and it um, produces a lot of fertile stuff, you know. The excrements of fish can be used as dung, which is really good and uh, helps growing the plants. And the higher up you get, the more tropical you get. So the lowest basement is where the fish are. The water that is used over there, obviously the water due to heat and stuff is going to condense and then the water is going up, you know, and uh, the whole thing goes all the way up to the highest level and the highest level usually is a greenhouse which has like a glass, um, kind of a glass house effect where you have like big glass and the sun is shining and making it very hot and humid in there and all the water which is going to condense there is then kind of um, caught with like a system and brought back into the water flow. So you have a full flow water in this vertical farm. And the higher up you get, you've like, you know, on one level you've got potatoes, the next level you've got tomatoes, the next level you've got some fruits, and the highest level is a tropical house in which you've got some palm trees, coconut and whatnot. And the arrangement is always utilized in a way that you have all the things act together in a full cycle, you know, in a flow, so that you can feed the fish with some other stuff you grow, you can use the fish to, well, basically feed, for example, if you have other animals, you can use the fish to feed the animals, you could have, I don't know, cats or whatever, for whatever reason you would have them, but that's the idea, that everything in this cycle is a fully closed cycle of a greenhouse, and you can produce all the goods that you have in there with all the products you have in there. So it's a full closed cycle and completely self-sufficient. And that idea um, was the inspiration for this greenhouse attempt over here. Now, I gotta admit, it's not really working exactly the same way. There are many reasons that um, 
uh, th you know, that are causing this. Um, so the first one being, I don't have a vertical farm arrangement over here and we don't have the same full flow because we don't have the pressure of ours and like everything that would act like on earth where you can u utilize that. So vertical farming wouldn't necessarily work the same way because space is, um, the sun is not really um, heating up so much as you would have it on earth so you can't use the sun as basically the heating um, arrangement here to make the water condense and go back into the flow so therefore we have a different um, attempt over here with a more um, man-made heating system and cooling system at the same time um, and so we have a uh, a water bottle in there um, you will see that in a second and the water is actually warmed um, or heated by um, well actually by by power because we do have solar energy uh, quite a lot so we can use the power for that and then this this water is you going to be used for the flow in, uh, in case you're wondering why I made this pink over there, this is simply just to give me an idea of what I don't want to use. This is a very nice technique to copy things in a perfect circle. Um, you just take this, rotate it once, you, so you have exactly the gap that is in between the 15 degree angle. And once you've done this, you just mark your um, piece that you do not want to have because the pink area is where the pieces will connect later on once I'm going to copy them all around. This is the area where to connect. So I always use this kind of pink color to tell me where I have to stop and where the end is because when I delete stuff later on, it's easier to distinguish which piece I have to delete and which I have to keep in order to make a very seamless little connection over here. It's kind of fun that I use these um, uh, backpack pieces over here um, that actually work like a super nice rubber ring that would be the perfect connection between two elements because again we are working as if a space station really would be built and then obviously we would have the problem that this is all built modular and the modules have to be connected somehow and specifically in this round ring I wanted to also have some flexibility um, because Realistically, and we talked about that in the last episode, we also need to think about gravity. And if this thing is rotating the whole time, you would have some stress on the elements. So it makes sense that there is some flexible parts also integrated. Now, this is, by the way, over here, this is the water tab I was talking about, the little water arrangement in which you could maybe have some very tiny fish or something like that um, to use their excrements as dung and also use the fish as food. Um, that's definitely something that needs to be... Uh, used and maybe we even have to think of a farm maybe like a chicken farm or anything like that uh, because we will also have carnivores in here specifically in today's episode we will already have the lion as you guys obviously told me there is no project leo without a lion i mean that was that was kind of obvious um so the first episode now resembles most of your obvious things and uh, already to tell you today's episode is going to be um, a little bit more challenging the task is to get to a thousand likes. A thousand likes on this video is important for the next episode. This is the mission for our next episode. So um, the corporation who brings in the transmission, you've seen the logo today. If you haven't seen the logo, go, go back to the beginning. Um, there is going to be a story about this corporation who is giving us the task and building all of this. There were a couple of very interesting comments that um, may or may not have already had some good insight into the um, the story that is behind Project Leo, but uh, you'll see, you'll see in the future. If you make it, if if we fulfill all the challenges in all ten episodes, we'll make it to the end, and you will see what this all was about. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, very much, very much looking forward to it uh, if we get it done. So a thousand likes is the task. So if you're watching the video and considering this video may get around 5,000 views, maybe if things are going to be good, um, you need to like. Every fifth person have to like. So if you're watching this video right now and you made it till this point in time and you're listening to me, why the hell wouldn't you like, huh? See, all you skipped here. So if you skipped here and I caught you up, you have to like anyways. So a thousand likes is the target for today's video. Um, and if you have something to say, a comment about next episode or so, you can do so, but that's not the challenge for today. The challenge is to like the video. A thousand likes is today's challenge. Um, so yeah, we are looking forward to that. Also, I'm looking forward to playing around with the DLC. I have some cool ideas for what we can do with the DLC. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the DLC, frankly, because that's for a different video. Let's talk about the next module we are building. You've seen the assembly at the beginning of the video. Uh, I wanted to do something like, um, you know, I, I think one of the coolest scenes that Disney has produced in the Star Wars universe is the assembly of the Death Star in Rogue One. I absolutely 
love this scene. The the fact how they um, how they make sure that the scale is obvious with putting the Star Destroyers in front was just ridiculous. And I wanted to create something similar, but um, with the stop motion, it just doesn't have the same effect. I really wish, I really wish the uh, camera module we got last time, or the camera function in the last update, uh, would actually be, um, you know, uh, would be working with the redo and undo, but it doesn't work. So as soon as you go into the camera, you can't undo what you've built. That would have been, that would be actually looking super, super nice, but it doesn't. So yeah, at the end of the day, I have to be a little bit more cautious about this and uh, do something else. And the stop motion is kind of okay, but it doesn't look so smooth. I really wish something like, um, I, I, the best thing we could have is like a camera mod that it's that is available in, for example, uh, yeah, now City Skylines also City Skylines 2 is going to have an amazing camera mod with the opportunity to film some really cool themes and uh, do some replays and stuff. But I think the best mod for that is uh, comparison is uh, the replay mod of Minecraft. If we had something like that in Planet Zoo, oh my god, that would be absolutely fantastic for video makers. But yeah, let's talk about the module. So I continued with. Um, the trick to not use actual screens, but then use um, the um, the metal frames to kind of do an implied glass dome. It's technically, you have to imagine that there is glass in between. The problem obviously is that <coughs> if you use the glass pieces, it just looks like a mess because if they're overlapping or anything like that, it just looks absolutely horrendous and really not nice. And yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's kind of, weird. Uh, no worries, by the way, we will not always have the same uh, module as over here. We are going to d have different modules, different styles, different designs, but I, I went with this kind of stadium design, as Chad called it, because we did most of this in stream. Um, so just as a heads up, if you're not on my Twitch, make sure to follow over there as well. I I try to stream cons um, like on a regular basis, but at the moment it's Life makes it hard, but I'm trying my best to at least stream once or even twice a week. At the moment, I can't do twice, but once is actually doable. So, yeah, if you're looking forward to streams and seeing this live, make sure to follow over there. But, yeah, anyways, um, we are now building in this stadium, as we called it. As you can see, it's a huge module, and then I decided to do a little bit of a different thing here. Um, I wanted to make, like, a lowered area in the center, where we would also have, like, a water, like a lake. And um, around that, we would have the facilities within the huge structure. Um, it kind of works good, not gonna lie. It looked it looked really good um, once I've done the final bits here. As I said, it's not super detailed as of now, and it's not perfectly fine working right now, but we will do this on stream next time around. I, I will actually do all this kind of stuff off screen. Maybe I'm gonna make like a making off episode somewhere in the future. But for the moment, this is what we are going with. Um, I, I just think this is the best way of handling it at the moment. Um, just keeping it to a bare minimum, to, to just have it, the biome as it is, and then make sure that everything works. And later on, we can do some final detailing to understand how many pieces we have left, because, you know, that's another problem of this project. Um, these structures take up a lot of pieces and hence well, there is a chance to destroy your FPS by that, even on my computer, and I really, 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 really do not want to destroy my FPS too early on in the project. At least 10 episodes should be doable, so yeah. But you can see now I'm just doing a little bit of landscaping. Again, as I said, not too crazy, just a little bit so that it looks almost like um, a little bit na natural, but see, the point is it can't be supernatural. It is all man-made, and it it has to deal with a lot of circumstances that make work or make this hard to achieve. So you can really look at this like a like a zoo habitat with a lot of problems. I mean, getting let alone the soil um, that is brought up here would take up to a couple thousand starships to bring it up here. So you you could see how massive this project would be. It's if it's in the year 2100, it would have been started in 2040 maybe already. So uh, we can really think about this story uh, if we if we feel good, because we should definitely do so. But yeah, you can see putting a lot of trees down and stuff just to make sure that it looks good. But again, not too many trees, but again, all these trees would need to be grown here. And one thing I need to talk about real quick is that the opening um, at the top is not done yet. Like the, the dome has no roof, if you will. Um, I mean, there is no rain or anything like that, uh, technically in here. But I had the idea to do some fake clouds and stuff, uh, simply because this, again, 
we have to think about all this stuff and um, in here there would need to be air and we would need to have a certain air system. Um, the plants and stuff obviously would help with that, like doing some photosynthesis and stuff like this definitely does help in order to create a climate within this dome. But we don't have the facilities for that done quite yet. This will be part of the next episode. So every episode will kind of have the biome in itself and also one element that helps the whole sustainability thing. So next up will be the airflow kind of thing because again this is super unrealistic as it stands right now but we can't really do too much about it. Uh, we have to imagine it would be so there is a huge glass panel on top if you will and that's the easiest thing to think about this and then we have a full flow within the habitat and again um, humidity is a thing that we would need and maybe it does create some fake clouds and fake rain um, at least that would help a lot tremendously with the growing of these things. I honestly have no idea if this would theoretically be possible anyways. I think it would um, there are already some techniques in the world to create clouds and actually to do, to make clouds rain. So there is certain things that work. So we, we can manipulate the weather already a little, but who knows in like 50 years time what is possible and whatnot. I just imagine it would be possible. Um, so that's the, that's the foundation for our thinking over here. But yeah, you can see putting a little bit of stuff in here for the lions. And then fast forward, you can see some animals in here. There are some elephants and stuff. I'll talk more about the decision, what I put together and whatnot in the next episode but that's been it for today i really hope you liked it um think about it we need to have a thousand likes in order to make the next episode happen so go down there give the video a like subscribe if you haven't already and i talk to you in the next one until then have a good time thank you so much for watching and goodbye